Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the interest and the love you have given us to be in your presence and to study your word together. For some of us, we know it may be a great sacrifice to be here. And we pray that you honor the commitment and consecration of your people and bless every one of us in the study in Jesus' name. As we study week after week, make us more like Jesus Christ. That the light will shine more and more in our lives and we bring glory unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. In our study of the scriptures, we are now in the epistle of James. We started with chapter 3 last week, and today we are still looking at that chapter. We are looking at verses 3 to 6. It's uh, talking about the tongue. It mentions the tongue this time as a little member. And it gives us illustrations of little things, little instruments, with great, great potentials. That's why we have titled the study of tonight, Little Member with Great Potentials. I think if we think deep, we'll understand that there are some little, little things that have great consequences in life. A little poison in your cup of water makes the water undrinkable. A little tumor in the brain can disorganize you and can give a mental problem even. Some of us have the experience of a little fire in the room and one of the clothes there catching fire, burning down the whole room, even the whole house. And a little whisper, a little gossip, a little seed of discord that you may sow in a family. In fact, just a little slander, a little hatred, a little lie, a little deception can do great damage in people's lives. It will be like a little fire that destroys precious lives. If you know a relationship amidst us, a little whisper, double tongue can destroy the peace and the happiness of the church and of the family. And uh, sometimes the problem is a backbiting tongue. It disquieties us, it discourages us. And that little backbiting, that little gossip has overthrown houses, pulled down great men and strong cities. It has cast down virtuous women, it has destroyed children unnecessarily. And it is not only the fault of the people that are speaking, it is the fault of the people that are listening. And that's why John Wesley many years ago said, Speak evil of no man, hear evil of no man, if there were no hearers, there will be no speakers of evil. The word that will speak and kill at a distance. It makes a little tongue very dangerous, very deadly, very destructive. In the history of the world, many people have died by the edge of the sword. But more people have fallen by the tongue of careless people. That's why the Lord is directing us to the subject of the little member, the tongue, tonight. Please look at your Bible now. James chapter 3 from verse 3. It, the writer tells us, Behold, we put beads in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. He gives us another illustration in verse 4. He says, Look at it, behold, also the sheep, which though they be so great, are driven of sea of fierce wind, yet are they turned about with a very small rudder, a very small aim, whithersoever the governor listed. After giving us those two illustrations, then he makes the application. Even so, in verse 5, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. And then he tells us the great consequence of the misuse of the tongue in verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue. Among our members, it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on the fire of hell. There are three things that come out very clearly in the passage we have read. Number one, a directing force. The beach in the horse's mouth, the little hand, the little rudder that is directing the great sheep, a directing force. Number two, a destructive for a fire. That's a little fire, a world of iniquity that sets the whole body on fire and it is set on the fire of hell, a destructive fire. Number three, the deciding factor. If we're going to be sad or happy in life, that's the deciding factor. 
If our families are going to be peaceful or disorganized, the tongue is the deciding factor. If the church is going to grow spiritually or we're going to scatter the church, the tongue is the deciding factor. If we're going to spend eternity in heaven or eternity in hellfire, the tongue is the deciding factor. A directing force, a destructive fire, the deciding factor. Let's look at point number one. A directing force. It's telling us that the direction you go, the road you take, the life you live is majorly directed by your tongue. The salesman knows that the success depends on the use of your tongue. The woman whose home is broken, she knows that is the directing force. It is the tongue that either destroys, destabilizes, or builds on the family. It is the tongue. A directing force. In verses 3 and 4, once again, it says, Behold, it's like an exclamation. He had said it in verses 1 and 2. In many things we have faith all. Now, you might not be saying, but this tongue you are talking about is so feeble, it has no bone, it has no muscle. How is it that that little member will do such a great damage in our lives? He said, don't let that do surprise you. Behold, look at this. We put beads in the horse's mouth and that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body by that little directing force. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 32. He's telling us in Psalm 32 verse 9. He's using the same illustration. He tells us, be not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with beech and with bridle, lest they come near unto thee. He said, we can understand because that's an animal, it is controlled by that beast, but we are human beings made in the image of God, we must not be like that animal. He's saying that we control the force from without. But we human beings, with the grace of God and the Spirit of God within us, we should be controlled from within. We come back to James in chapter 1 verse 26. He's telling us the importance of the control of that tongue. You control your life, you control your tongue, you control your life. Control your tongue, you control your destiny. Control your tongue, you control the direction of your family. Control your tongue, you control your substance and your prosperity and the success of your business in life. In James chapter 1 verse 26. James chapter 1 verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bright, let not, control it not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. A careless person with religion but a reckless tongue. No control, no bridle, no authority on the tongue. He says the profession of our religion, whatever we are professing the Christian experience, everything is valueless, superficial, it's vain. He come back to James chapter 3 verse 4. He said, behold also the sheep. He's telling us something here. He wants to confirm the truth by the use of two illustrations. Because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be established. He gives us one illustration from the animal kingdom. And then he gives us an illustration from the natural world, from the journey that people make in the world, on the great, in the great sheep, on the stormy seas of life. Behold also, he says, the sheep, which though they be so great. Have you seen some sheep before? You have a record in Acts of the Apostles chapter 27 and you have about 276 people that were inside that sheep. So great a sheep in the world in which we are living today. Some sheep are so great they can occupy thousands of people. Sometimes it's like a little city in that whole sheep and there's a little rudder, a little, a little hem that is tearing that sheep, a little thing conducting, directing that whole city on the sea. And even though that sheep may be driven by fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hem. That's the rudder, the steering. Whithersoever the governor listed. What he's telling us is that we may be big in size, but the little tongue is that like, like little rudder that is directing our life. 
control the tongue, control the mouth of that horse, you control the whole body of the horse. And direct that sheep with that little hem, and then you direct the sheep in the right direction. As you look at the man, you look at his tongue. It is that little tongue that controls, that directs the direction in which that man, in which that woman will go. If the tongue is uncontrolled, the life will go in the wrong direction. That's why he's telling us that although that tongue is small, take care of that tongue, put that tongue under control, then your life, your family, even the church will be under control. A little bit new this secret in Psalm 39. Reading from verse 1. See the consecration, the commitment, the decision of David. He said, I said, I will take it to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. He said, I know where the problem can come from. It's from my tongue. He said, I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. And then he gives us a testimony in verse 2. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good and my sorrow was stirred in me. Actually, we need to do that in our lives. We need to think before we speak. We need to meditate before we open our mouth. We need to keep our tongue because you know our tongue, if you look at the past history of our lives, our tongues have gotten us into trouble many, many times. Why don't we decide in the rest part of our lives, I will keep my tongue, you will keep your tongue, so we don't dive into more troubles in our lives. In Matthew chapter 12, here the Lord is telling us about the tongue also. And he tells us that this little member can cause a great problem in any life. Matthew chapter 12 verse 34 O oh, generation of vipers How can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart The mouth speaketh He's telling us the tongue is not just a culprit It's not just a guilty one It's a problem of the root of the heart It's like uh, it's telling us The tongue is a storehouse and it is the, the heart, it's a storehouse, and it is the tongue that reveals what to store in the heart in your storehouse. In verse 35, a good man out of a good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of evil treasure I bringeth forth evil things. And then he brings the conclusion in verse 36. And it's a, it's a terrifying conclusion. It's something that should make us to tremble. He says, but I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That is, everything is going on record. A slander, an abusive word, a cutting critical a word that criticizes other people, a word that tears other families apart, a word that will speak out and people want to go and commit suicide after hearing from all. A word that destroys and does not build up. He said, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. And then he said, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, by thy words thou shalt be condemned. The Bible tells us a little leaven, leaven the whole law. A little careless word you throw to that person. A little lie you didn't investigate, they told you a lie, and you believed a lie, and you are spreading that lie, will give account in the day of judgment. I pray the Lord will forgive us. I pray the Lord will cleanse us. I will bring everything under the blood of the Lamb tonight in Jesus' name. James wants us to understand the seriousness of the tongue. So he goes on now to point number two, and he gives us a destructive fire. In James chapter 3 verses 5 and 6, he said now, Even so, the tongue is a little member. Even so, the tongue is a little member. And boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. In the last, in, the, in this century, 1903, there was a woman in southern of in the southern of a uh, part of Korea. She was uh, boiling rice on in the pot. 
But you see, because of the time, we're talking about uh, more than 90 years ago now, actually about 95, 96 years ago, they, they were horse that were attacked together. Uh, very, very many of them string together. And the rice boiled over, and the water spilled on the fire, and then the water went up and caught on the thatched uh, roof, and then went to another one to cut a long story short, 3,000 houses were burnt down. Property was lost. In fact, some lives were even lost. A little fire that burns and just uh, destroys many, de devastates many. You, have, you read in the papers last year, in our own country here in Delta State, how a little fire, a little spark, in fact, nobody knew where it came from. And then it caught on the pipe, it caught in the petrol, and hundreds of lives were destroyed just like that. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindled, and the tongue is a fire. It's a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. The legs cannot walk everywhere, but the tongue can say anything, anytime. The hands cannot do every form of evil. There are some evil that the hand may want to do, and the hand will not have the chance, will not have the opportunity, will not have the ability. The tongue can say anything beyond what the hand can do. The hand cannot kill a person with a sword if that person is far away at a distance. But the tongue can kill somebody even if he's hundreds of kilometers away. And that's why it says the tongue is a fire, it's a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the cause of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. Actually what uh, the Lord is teaching us here is that the damage that the tongue can do is like the fire of the forest that sets the fire ablaze. A forest fire is, is wide ranging. Once the forest is set on fire like that, the flames will be spreading, it becomes uncontrollable, it cannot be stopped. And you, you know that's what the tongue does? A little, a little gossip that you tell your neighbor? When he's going to tell another person, he exaggerates it. When he, that person wants to tell another person, he will add his own. By the time it gets to the last person, in fact, can we even talk of the last person? By the, the time it gets to many, many people, the person that is hearing now will think that this fellow is a backslider, is a terrible sinner. In fact, they will be thinking that it's not fit to be in our church, to be in the fellowship at all. Once you drop that malicious word, and other people begin to relate and repeat that scandalous, untrue story about your fellow brother, about your fellow sister, it can cause harm even hundreds of miles away. Then we come for the Congress in January, and somebody thousands of kilometers away will come and ask you, uh -uh, I thought you are no more in the church, I thought you had backslidden, because even though I'm far away in my country, I had that how did you hear a little gossip moving from one person to the other we're doing damage with our tongue a forest fire is uncontrollable and so no man can control the damage that the tongue can do isn't it a shame that we believers will carry rumor that is not confirmed about our brother about our sister we see him we see her we will not check up we will not find out we'll be rolling that thing on spreading that thing and destroying our fellow brother our fellow sister and remember words are like eggs once they drop down they cannot be regarded again in proverbs chapter 18 from verse 7 proverbs chapter 18 reading from verse 7 it says, a fool's mouth is his destruction. His leaves are the snare of his soul. We get into trouble too many times because of our own tongue. We are our own greatest enemies because of the use of our tongue. In verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 27. An ungodly man diggeth up evil. Something that that fellow has confessed, an ungodly man, he will dig it up. Something God has forgiven and forgotten never to be remembered again. An, un an ungodly person, a backslider, a talkative, he will dig it up. 
a little problem in the family that husband and wife they have settled among themselves and they have even forgotten there was a problem an ungodly person he will dig it up and begin to tell stories to their in-laws in his leaves there is a there is a burning fire we ought to be careful with the way we use our tongue so we don't destroy our lives so we don't destroy the lives of other people and look at proverbs chapter 26 in verse 18 as a madman who casteth fire, brands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and says, Was I not plain? Am I not in sport? A Christian is supposed to be vigilant and sober. We don't, we don't play with uh, negative things. We don't play with lies, with deception. You tell something to your fellow brother, to your fellow sister, and uh, the thing is going to cause him sorrow. It's going to cause him unhappiness. And then after that, you say, well, I was only playing. How can you play with something that will destroy your brother or destroy your sister? I pray that God will be merciful on us. That the Lord himself will make us to dig up this sin, expose this sin today, be washed in the blood of the Lamb, and from tonight, all those careless words will never come out of our mouths in Jesus' name. James tells us the tongue is a world of iniquity. What does he mean by that? It says it's a world of evil. It says there is no evil done in this world which cannot be perpetrated and promoted by the tongue. The tongue is a problem. Can there be any real war without first of all a war of words? All the many lives that have been lost in international wars, intertribal wars, some people are saying the wrong thing for the other people to hear, and the other people are replying, that's how wars begin, it destroys. It says the tongue is a world of iniquity. In fact, the tongue is so sinful that it can make evil look attractive. That is, if people that eat back the bad tongue, they can make evil things to look good that people will want to do that evil thing. And it is the tongue of men that will excuse and justify those evil destructive things they are doing among themselves. The tongue is so bad that the tongue can persuade other people and lead them into gross sins. The uncontrollable tongue is full of wickedness and poisons every part of our lives. We go now to point number three, is a deciding factor. Uh, look at uh, James chapter three, look at verse two. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. That tells you right there, the tongue is the deciding factor. Whether you live a holy life, a righteous life, a pure life, a perfect life, the tongue is the deciding factor. Once you don't offend the world, you'll be able to control the whole body as well. On the other hand, it tells us in verse 6, it says the tongue is a fire. It's a world of iniquity. And so is the tongue among our members. It defiles the whole body. In verse 2, it says we are able to bridle the whole body. In verse 6, it says it defiles and destroys uh, the whole body. That means if you are righteous, the tongue is the deciding factor. If you are righteous, the tongue is the deciding factor. And then it says in that verse 6, and set us on fire, the whole course of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. And that's why we are told in, in James chapter 1 verse 26, look at it again. He says, if any man, anyone, anywhere, anytime, among you seem to be religious, and he's telling those big, big testimonies, I'm born again, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, baptized in the Holy Ghost. But if he bridleth not his own tongue, he deceiveth his own heart, and this man's religion is vain. Uh, can you see there, the tongue is a deciding factor. In James chapter 4 verse 11, he says, speak not evil one of another, brethren. He says, he that speaketh evil of his brother, and judges his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judges, and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but why judge? He's telling us that our tongue will decide where we're going to spend eternity. And the tongue will tell whether we're righteous or we're righteous, whether we're children of God or we're not children of God. Uh, look at Jude verse 15 and verse 16. Jude verse 15 and verse 16. 
He says the Lord is coming again. He will be coming with thousands of his saints. In verse 15, what is he coming for? To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches. You see that hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And then he tells us other things they do with the tongue in verse 16. They are murmurers and they are complainers and they are walking after their own laws and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. What we need is a transformation of our heart by the grace and the power of God. When our hearts are transformed and our tongues are taught by the power and the grace of God, things will become totally different. And we can easily know the spiritual state of a man, of a woman, by the kind of tongue he has, he operates with. And your final destiny, eternal destiny, will be decided and determined by your tongue. You know what that means? Heaven or hell, at the end of life will be determined for each of us on the basis of whether there is grace or we are void of grace, whether our words are gracious or graceless. And that means then the tongue is the deciding factor. And many things actually reveal whether we have God's grace or we don't have God's grace. Is love through us, the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, a Christ-like character, a Christian conduct, obedience to the Word and the will of God, Total submission to thus says the law. And yet we need to emphasize nothing reveals our spiritual state, our spiritual condition more readily than our tongue. Your tongue, your speech will reveal the kind of person you are. And will reveal where you will spend eternity. Will reveal whether you are going to be useful or useless in this life. Whether you are going to be profitable or profitable to the society, it's your tongue that will be the determining factor in time and in eternity. Your tongue plays a major significant role in your happiness and in your fulfillment in time or at a degree. In Proverbs chapter 13 verse 3. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. We've learnt about the tongue tonight. You've seen that is a deciding factor. It can spoil your testimony. It can destroy your life. It can destroy the lives of other people too. What are you going to do about it? Do you believe the scripture? Do you accept the words of Jesus Christ? Are you going to allow the grace of God to come into your heart, transform you and touch you, and transform the way you use your tongue? He's willing to help us if we ask for his help. Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord, I need help, I need help, I cannot tame this or really remember myself. It has gotten me into trouble many times. I cannot control this, you know, Lord, I need your help to control it for me. Many times we talk without thinking. We talk without meditating on the consequence of what we say. We destroy our lives. We destroy our families. We destroy other people by the negative use of our tongue. Let the grace of God come to you tonight. Let the grace of God uh, control your tongue tonight. Let him put a bridle on your tongue that you will never be the same again and your way of speaking, your conversation and the things you are allowed to proceed out of your mouth let it be seasoned with grace from the morning to the afternoon to the evening Lord help me Lord help me Lord help me if you ask for his help, he will help you if you ask for his help, he will help you your tongue can become a firewall of iniquity, or your tongue can be under the control of the Spirit of God. You have the choice to make. The tongue is the deciding factor. It's willing to help you. Bring your tongue to the altar of the Lord. He will help you.